Justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. You came to court to testify about what you heard, what you saw, and what you know. She said. I don't have a hearing problem. This ear works good. This one works even better. She's firm. I'm not responsible for that ticket, and I'm not going to pay for it. Who says you're not going to pay for it? I make that decision, not you. She's honest. What do you have to say? All I have to Nothing. say. Nothing. <laughs> this is Justice with Judge Maybelline. Anita Spence is suing her tenant, Brett Pollard, in the amount of $1,800. Ms. Spence claims Mr. Pollard withheld his rent after purchasing and improperly installing soundproofing material to his apartment without her authorization. Mr. Pollard claims the noise from his neighbor's television was severe and says there was no way for him to get relief other than his course of action. In the matter of Anita Spence versus Brett Pollard, um, you're suing Mr. Pollard for $1,800, which is the cost of rent he withheld for soundproofing his own apartment and causing damages as a result thereof. And Mr. Pollard, you're saying I had every right to do so because the witness over here, Justin Bryan, was a noisy neighbor and I had no other recourse, right? Absolutely. Okay, so Ms. Spence, as the landlord, tell me what was going on. So he complains all the time that my other tenant that moved in, my witness, uh, is too loud. And we have been over it. I've been into his house, actually. I went in. I, I stood. When his house, you're talking about the defendant. Apart, yeah, the defendant's apartment. I sat right where he sits. And I tried to listen to this loud noise. And I didn't even hear any loud noises. It was, it was just regular muffled TV from, you know, the neighbor's apartment. It didn't. It wasn't bothersome. How do they live? In, uh, above each other? Below? Side by side? Side what? by side. Side by side? Okay. And I, I couldn't hear the noise. And uh, also the police have been called and they've come out and they said that it wasn't even that loud. That I mean, it was below the decibel level. Okay. So there's been lots of, you know, trying to get him to understand that it's not that loud. And Have you also been to Mr. Bryant's apartment? To see what how he plays his music or watches television? Yeah, a little bit louder. He he's a he's a, a vet from uh, I'll let him tell me himself. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Bryan, step forward, please. So since you seem to be the all of this, uh, you may have a seat for a minute, Miss Miss Spence. You're this man's neighbor. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, tell me what's going on between the two of you. Well, about the second or third day that I moved into my apartment, I was enjoying my new home. I was somewhat situated, watching a television show, and suddenly they're just bang, 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 bang on my front door. And Mr. Pollard is there screaming at me to turn it down. So I'm just like, whoa, what is this? And yes, I, I, I did turn it down. Oh, hold on time. one second. But I, I will tell you, I do. Turn what down? My television. Okay, your television is a little loud? It was a little loud. I will play my television a little, 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 little bit louder than most people. And why is I that? I suffered a hearing injury when I was in service in Iraq. Oh. Yes. And so, I mean, I, I'm not trying to, like, you know, be cool. I'm just trying to understand trying the to dialogue. Hear. Pardon me, Your Honor? Just trying to hear. Exactly. Exactly. All right. But I, I turned it down, and I know the commercials come up louder, but yeah, I, I can't control always that. Do. So is this day or night we're talking about? This was in the afternoon. Okay. I got it. Now, let me hear from you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Bryan. So you guys have been at this for a few months, huh? It's been pretty constant. Mr. Polly, let me hear from you. What do you have to say? Uh, I mean, he's just a loud, obnoxious neighbor. Uh, I, I've asked him several times politely to keep it down. And... What's loud? What's obnoxious? Well, I mean, I, I'm a web designer. Uh, I, I, I work from home during the day. I need uh, concentration to, you know, do my work. Okay, so he said he has his TV on. It's, yeah, it's very loud and obnoxious. Okay. It's, it's to you. Just, what's that? According to the police, according to the landlord, the police said it doesn't rise above the decibel it's level. Just That's acceptable. Under the, it's just under. Well, just under is under. You know, it's just like just won the game at the buzzer, but you won. <laughs> just under is under. Yeah. Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. And he just keeps the TV super loud. What am I supposed to do about this? Move. And later... So I warned him. I said, you know, there are patrols on the lake. You can get a ticket for doing this. Uh, you know, I know you're here partying because it's spring break.
Justice with Judge Maybelline. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. We're back with the case of Anita Spence, who is suing Brett Pollard for unpaid rent. So he didn't get cited. So he's not violating the city ordinance in terms of noise It's a levels. public nuisance. It's a public nuisance. No, it's not a public nuisance if he's not violating the city ordinance in terms of noise level. I have, I've, I've, I've looked this up on the internet, noise emitted from premises. Well, you better be look it up in the, in the statutes because it's not just noise. There are certain requirements and there are certain timetables for noise between these hours, between 7 a.m. and 10, p, uh, 10 p.m. You can have your, your, at certain levels. After that, it's considered a nuisance and annoying to the public and to your neighbors. She said that the police officers have come in response to you. They've tested. It doesn't rise above that. It has on one occasion. Okay, one occasion. All right. One. Did that lead you to soundproof? So then he's, he, yes, I, I have. So I, how did you, did you ask permission to soundproof your walls? No, why should I have to ask permission? Because it's not your problem. I'm renting it. Any time, okay, to soundproof your wall, what did it require? It, it's just like insulation, foam what on did the it outside. Require? What did it require you to do? I, I, I hired a handyman to do it What for did me. it require for him to install that insulation? Uh, I believe it was $1,200. I didn't ask you what did it cost. I said, what did it require? What it, did he have to do to the wall? He put uh, foam insulation on the outside. Didn't he have to cut something? No. How, how did he put foam insulation without cutting anything? Well, I mean, he cut the foam. How did he put it on the outside of the wall without cutting anything from it's, the inside? It's just pasted on there. Okay, come back up, Ms. Spence. Because you said he's damaged your walls with this soundproofing. Uh, well, the... Um First, it was damaged by him hitting it and causing holes. Oh, that's what caused the damage. In the walls, yes. You hit the wall and knocked the hole in it? I was trying to quiet him down. So you think that his television justifies you hitting the walls and knocking a hole in it? He couldn't even hear me banging. Like, how? <laughs> that's absurd. Uh, you're banging so hard on the wall He's that you knocked the hole in He just keeps the TV super loud. What am I supposed to do about this? Move. You do have that option. You can move. If you need that much peace and quiet, that you live when in an apartment with somebody, that his television bothers you, you can move out to something where She sold me on this place. Uh, but like, once it the, wasn't working, you could have said, may I break the She, she told me noisy. it was a really peaceful, nice little neighborhood. It was really quiet when I first moved in. There was no problems whatsoever. This is why I moved in there in the first place. Why should I have to move when this man just moved here like two months ago? Because you're the one who's annoyed. No it was one else a really appears nice to be place annoyed but that. you. That's why you should have to move. Why should he have to move? Because you're annoyed. Why does everybody think that you're entitled? Why He's just told you. I turned my TV up to a level that I can hear. I have a problem due to an injury I suffered in war. And I turned the TV up to a level that I can hear. According to the police, according to your landlord, who listened to your complaint, it was not thing. too loud. Why can't you work? Why can't you put earplugs in your ear during the day? I have. It, it doesn't work. Okay, do I something to make, else I to cover your ears. I had to take drastic ears. measures, Your Honor. So you soundproofed your walls? Yes. But after you damaged them? Yes, afterwards, yes. By knocking holes in them? Well, How I was, was trying to get him to quiet wall? down. It was $600. $600. You have his security deposit, don't you? Um, I do, but I just feel like I need to get that No, fixed. you can't get it back. He hasn't moved yet. You're only entitled to it when they move. You haven't paid the rent? No, I have not. For which month? For How this, many months? It, it was just the one, one month. month. And why haven't you paid rent? Because I feel that she should pay for the soundproofing. Did you give her notice and ask her to soundproof? No, but it was it was needed. So just because it's if needed. If the stove is broken and I have to repair the stove, should I pay for it out of my pocket? I just, we're not talking about a repaired stove. That was brought up to me. That's another issue. We're talking about soundproofing. You cannot take it. It was a point. requirement. Okay, you thought it was a requirement. I'm going to tell you the law before you do anything to your property as a tenant that you believe should or you want done, you have to give the landlord notice of the problem, you have to give them a reasonable time to repair, and if that's not done, then you get to do it. So she doesn't have to pay I for your soundproofing. I couldn't do my business. Look, you had a choice of moving, but she doesn't, and you soundproof, which was also your choice, but your, t your landlord doesn't have to pay for it, you still have to pay your rent. Here's your out. 
he didn't pay the rent, you can put him out. Unless he pays the rent. You prepared to pay it? No. Move within 30 days, but you still owe the rent for the last month. And if you don't move within 30 days, you're going to owe more. And then ask when he moves, you deduct the damages to the apartment from his security deposit. All right? So that's the order of the court. Judgment for the plaintiff. All rise. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $1,800. You cannot put soundproofing material in a place that's not yours. I'm glad I'm getting my rent money back. It's really frustrating you never took any of my complaints seriously. I guess I will be leaving the material up when I leave. Coming up... As I got closer to where they were, which was where their cabin was, I noticed all kinds of liquor bottles all over the dock and along the beach in front of the cabin. They seemed to be tipsy. Justice with Judge Maybelline. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. Chris Fredericks is suing David Anderson in the amount of $1,000. Mr. Fredericks says he rented jet skis from Mr. Anderson and claims he returned them in good condition, but the defendant refuses to return his deposit. Mr. Anderson claims the jet skis were damaged when they were returned, and he says he's within his rights to keep Mr. Fredericks' deposit. The matter of Chris Fredericks versus David Anderson, you're suing him for $1,000. You want your uh, rental deposit fee back. And he's kept it saying that you damaged his property, so he won't refund the, the deposit. So now tell me why you think that you're entitled to your deposit back. Okay. Yeah, Your Honor. So um, we we're planning for this trip. We we're going up to the lake, a couple friends of mine. It's our last year in college, it's our spring break, and we're just preparing to have a good time. Um, you know, I, a friend of mine reached out and said that Mr. he does the, uh, the jet skis up on the lake. He can give me a good rate. So I reached out to him, let him know we're coming up. Originally, it was three friends, and he said, yeah, no problem. Uh, we went up, and a friend of mine, she decided to come with, so I asked for a fourth, and he was able to provide that for us, and he gave me a great rate, uh, just $1,200. We've to done this. To rent the jet skis? Yeah. And the cabin or lake or anything? Or just the skis? Well, my job was to get the skis. Okay. So, you know, we split it up. We've done this before. These are great friends since freshman year. We've been working together, doing different things. Oh, and so your uh, job was to rent the jet skis? That was my job. Got yes. it. Yeah. And um, not only that, but I had to put in the extra hours uh, to make sure I got the money for the jet skis. Um, so when we got there, he gave us a great rate. We were really happy about that. Um, you know, we planned this. It was meant to be, you know, a good event, and overall it was amazing until I didn't get my deposit back. Why didn't you get your deposit back? The next day, I received a phone call. He's saying that there's some scratches, there's some damage, and he's blaming me for it. To the jet skis? I, to the jet skis, that's right. And uh, I said, look, I gave him the keys back. There was no damage to those jet skis when I left. Mr. Anderson? Yes, Your Honor. Your version. On Saturday afternoon, before the return of the jet skis, Your Honor, I was out on the lake while these young folks were out on the jet skis. They were, they were erratic and uh, in, in the way they were driving the skis. Erratic if, doesn't tell me anything. What were they doing? Well, as I got closer to where they were, which was where their cabin was, I noticed all kinds of liquor bottles all over the dock and along the beach in front of the cabin. They seemed to be tipsy. Coming up. This is interesting. You brought me an affidavit from a friend or a neighbor that says, I think one of your renters hit my platoon boat. Closed captioning provided by... You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. We're back with the case of Chris Fredericks, who is suing David Anderson for breach of contract. So I warned him. I said, you know, there are patrols on the lake. You can get a ticket for doing this. You know, I know you're here partying because it's spring break and because you're graduating. You need to tone it down and, and make sure that you're safe. Sunday morning, I'm Did you see your jet skis then? Yes, I did. So what condition were your jet skis in? When as you far saw as I could tell at that point, Your Honor, there was, there was no damage to any of them. Okay, go on. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I get a call from Mr. Frederick saying, we want to return them earlier than the 5 o'clock. And was, I said, were well... Were they supposed to be returned at 5 o'clock Sunday or Monday? Sunday. Okay. So uh, 
So I just I told him just bring the jet skis back, leave the keys with my grandsons, and uh, and uh, and I'll and I'll get back with you later. Uh, on uh, when I got home that evening, it was it was dusk. I was tired. I got up and out, and I noticed to one of the four jet skis that wasn't there before. Um, Show me the damage. I have pictures, Your Honor. I also have. Uh, an affidavit of a neighbor, and I have uh, an estimate for repair. Let me tell you, and I'm going to tell you, Mr. Fredericks, and everybody else, whenever you give a deposit for something, <clears throat> and the refund of that deposit is, is conditioned upon the property being returned in a certain condition and state, to avoid the dispute over to whether you whether you've done that or not, you should always take a picture. You got all these smartphones that take pictures like that, videos and everything else. Use them for your good. Judge Maybelline's verdict when justice with Judge Maybelline returns. Promotional consideration provided by. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. Wow, that's pretty bad. That's the before and after, Your Honor. That's damage. This is interesting. You brought me an affidavit from a friend or a neighbor that says, I think one of your renters hit my platoon boat. Well, why don't I have an affidavit from your grandsons? How old are they? 13 and 14, Your Honor. Or have one of them here that says, when we got the skis back, they were damaged. And Papa, we saw damage to the skis. No, I don't have anything to that effect, Your but Honor. But why not? Because they, they were just to accept the keys. This is difficult, but the burden of proof is on you if you're going to keep his money to prove that he caused the damage. Since you weren't there and the people that received them did not say that they observed damage, we have 24 hours lapsing. Why don't I have an affidavit from them that you left the jet skis in good condition? Your Honor, it's my responsibility to bring the jet skis back. Why I don't I have affidavits from them saying you left them in good condition? I didn't ask them for one, Your Why Honor. Why not? You got a man who won't give you back your deposit because he says you damaged the jet skis and you want to prove that you did? I didn't think to do that, Your Honor. All oh I my know God. is that didn't... What do you guys think about when you're in college? Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. Um, there's a possibility that they're damaged by your grandson. There's a possibility they were damaged by them. So I'm going to ask you to refund him $500, and we're going to break it even, all right? You refund him $500 um, of his money, and you keep $500 of his money, all right? That's the order of the court. Judgment for both. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $500. I really wish you would have been there to receive the jet skis to see they weren't damaged, but next time I remember to take pictures. I'm really sorry our business relationship ended this way, but I firmly believe my grandkids did not cause that damage. You're this man's neighbor. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, tell me what's going on between the two of you. Well, about the second or third day that I moved into my apartment, I was enjoying my new home. I was somewhat situated, watching a television show, and suddenly they're just bang, 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 bang on my front door. And Mr. Pollard is there screaming at me to turn it down. So I'm just like, whoa, what is this? And yes, I, I, I did turn it down. Oh, hold time. on one second. But I, I will tell you, I do... Turn what down? My television. Okay, your television is a little loud? It was a little loud. I will play my television a little, li a little bit louder than most people. And why is I that? I suffered a hearing injury when I was in service in Iraq. Oh. Yes, and so, I mean, I, I'm not trying to, like, you know, be cool. I'm just trying to understand trying the to dialogue. Hear. Pardon me, Your Honor? Just trying to hear. Exactly, exactly. All right. But I, I turned it down, and I know the commercials come up louder, but yeah, I, I can't control always that. Do. So is this day or night we're talking about? This was in the afternoon. Okay, I got it. 
Now, let me hear from you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Brian. So you guys have been at this for a few months, huh? It's been pretty constant. Mr. Pollard, let me hear from you. What do you have to say? Uh, I mean, he's just a loud, obnoxious neighbor. Uh, I, I've asked him several times politely to keep it down. And... What's loud? What's obnoxious? Well, I mean, I, I'm a web designer. Uh... Statutes. Because it's not just noise. There's certain requirements and there are certain timetables for noise between these hours, between 7 a.m. and 10, p, uh, 10 p.m. You can have your, your, at certain levels. After that, it's considered a nuisance and annoying to the public and to your neighbors. She said the, the police officers have come in response to you. They've tested. It doesn't rise above that. It has on one occasion. Okay, one occasion. All right. One. Did that lead you to soundproof? So then he's, he, yes, it, I have. So I, how did you, did you ask permission to soundproof your walls? No, why should I have to ask permission? Because it's not your problem. I'm renting it. Any time, okay, to soundproof your wall, what did it require? It, it's just like insulation, foam What on did the it outside. require? What did it require you to do? I, I, I hired a handyman to do it What for did me. it require for him to install that insulation? Uh, I believe it was $1,200. I didn't ask you what did it cost. I said, what did it require? It, what did he have to do to the wall? He put uh, foam insulation on the outside. Didn't he have to cut something? No. How, how did he put foam insulation without cutting anything? Well, I mean, he cut the foam. How did he put it on the outside of the wall without cutting anything from the it's, inside? It's just pasted on there. Okay, come back up, Ms. Spence. Because you said he's damaged your walls with this sound. I, I, I work from home during the day. I need uh, concentration to, you know, do my work. Okay, so he said he has his TV on. It's, yeah, it's very loud and obnoxious. Okay. It's, it's to just, you. What's that? According to the police, according to the landlord, the police said it doesn't rise above the decibel it's level. Just That's acceptable. Under the, it's just under. Well, just under is under. You know, it's just like just won the game at the buzzer, but you won. <laughs> just under is under. Yeah. Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. And he just keeps the TV super loud. What am I supposed to do about this? Move. And later. So I warned him. I said, you know, there are patrols on the lake. You can get a ticket for doing this. Uh, you know, I know you're here partying because it's spring break. Justice with Judge Maybelline. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. We're back with the case of Anita Spence, who is suing Brett Pollard for unpaid rent. So he didn't get cited. So he's not violating the city ordinance in terms of noise. It's a levels. public nuisance. It's a public nuisance. No, it's not a public nuisance if he's not violating the city ordinance in terms of noise level. I have, I've, I've, I've looked this up on the internet, noise emitted from premises. Well, you better be... look it up in the, in the state. And I had no other recourse, right? Absolutely. Okay, so... Ms. Spence, as the landlord, tell me what's going on. So he complains all the time that my other tenant that moved in, my witness, uh, is too loud. And we have been over it. I've been into his house, actually. I went in. I, I stood. When his house, you're talking about the defendant. Apart, yeah, the defendant's apartment. I sat right where he sits. And I tried to listen to this loud noise. And I didn't even hear any loud noises. It was, it was just regular muffled TV from, you know, the neighbor's apartment. It didn't, it wasn't bothersome. How do they live? In, uh, above each other? Below? Side by side? Side what? by side. Side by side? Okay. And I, I couldn't hear the noise and uh, also the police have been called and they've come out and they said that it wasn't even that loud, that, I mean, it was below the decibel level. Okay. So there's been lots of you know, trying to get him to understand that it's not that loud. And have you also been to Mr. Bryant's apartment to see what how he plays his music or watches television? Yeah, a little bit louder. He he's a he's a, a vet from. Uh, I'll let him tell me himself. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Bryant, step forward, please. So since you seem to be the all of this, uh, you may have a seat for a minute, Miss Miss Spence. Justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. You came to court to testify about what you heard, what you saw, and what you know. She's fair. I don't have a hearing problem. This ear works good. This one works even better. She's firm. I'm not responsible for that ticket, and I'm not going to pay for it. Who says you're not going to pay for it? I make that decision, not you. She's honest. What do you have to say? All I have to Nothing. say. Nothing. <laughs> this is Justice with Judge Maybelline. 
Anita Spence is suing her tenant, Brett Pollard, in the amount of $1,800. Ms. Spence claims Mr. Pollard withheld his rent after purchasing and improperly installing soundproofing material to his apartment without her authorization. Mr. Pollard claims the noise from his neighbor's television was severe and says there was no way for him to get relief other than his course of action. In the matter of Anita Spence versus Brett Pollard, um, you're suing Mr. Pollard for $1,800, which is the cost of rent he withheld for soundproofing his own apartment and causing damages as a result thereof. And Mr. Pollard, you're saying I had every right to do so because the witness over here, Justin Bryan, was a noisy neighbor.